It's Lynn Liaz, March the 3rd, 2014. And something came up today to do with judging others and what the Bible has to say about that. And since there is quite the perverted um, gospel message floating around today, including um, when a Christian in love an attitude of love, I should say, or I'll get confused of meaning that you're in love with somebody. <laughs> but when a Christian out of love goes to someone else and shares with them what the Bible says in regards to something that they're doing, which is what we're supposed to do, people cry out, you're judging me, you're judging me, and all this garbage. Well, there's there's types of judgments that we're not supposed to do, and the Bible does uh, talk about the plank in your own eye. Well, what that verse is referring to is, let's say that I have a problem with lying and I lie all the time. How can I go to somebody who is also having the problem of lying and say to them, well, you shouldn't lie. The Bible says that that's wrong. Well, when I do that, I have a plank in my own eye with the same problem and you know, I can't be doing that. I'm a hypocrite. That is what that verse is referring to about the plank in your own eye. There is a godly form of correction that the Bible specifically tells us to do. Now, the reason there's this perversion of anything that you say is judging somebody that's floating around in the world today has to do with false doctrine. The devil does not want us to correct other people because, well, when we don't correct them for things, or let me put it better, a better way to say it, if I keep doing things that are wrong and nobody ever says anything to me, I'm not going to feel as convicted or think about it, especially if I'm really far gone, involved in something I've been doing. I may have a twinge of, you know, conviction once in a while, but if it's something I'm really involved in, it might take somebody talking to me about it to get me thinking. You know, I may get defensive about it and whatnot, but I'm still going to think about it. And the devil does not want us to do that. Thus, we have this false definition of what judgment is. So I found a great article on this whole issue, and I'm going to share it with you. And of course, you know, you can see what you think about it. You may agree or disagree. All I can do is share information with you, put it out there for you, and you can uh, make your own decision. I have received lots of negative feedback today from many um, supposed fellow Christians on my previous post I made to do with hell. I was very shocked, to say the least, at all the perversions that are out there that we're not supposed to preach on um, any of the negative aspects of prophecy or hell. And if you do, oh, I got accused by people writing long comments of where is my joy? Where is my happiness? We're under grace. Well, you need to read the whole New Testament and the whole Old Testament. We are under grace, but we're not to abuse God's grace. We cannot keep... Um, hanging Jesus up on the cross and putting him to death over and over for our sins. And I also did mention specifically multiple times that we will all sin and make mistakes. I didn't say anything about being perfect, yet I received comments from people. It's like they don't even really listen who say, well, nobody can be perfect. Well, I never said that. Don't, you know, put words in my mouth. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody will ever be perfect. And I said that. I said that we won't be perfect until, you know, we are taken from this body and we're in heaven with God. The only one who was ever perfect is Jesus. So we will never be perfect as long as we're in a body of flesh. Never. I was talking about living in sin living in sin and disobedience, living in a state of unrepentance is what I was talking about. But what I think happens is the people that write to me, they're angry or doing something that they know is wrong. They don't want to hear that. That's my personal take on it. And to be honest with you, I deleted their comments. I'm not going to post that. Their comments were rude. I, I have posted some comments where people disagree with me. And that's fine because they disagreed with me in a 
you know, normal, respectful way. Now, if it's a disagreement, but they enter into false doctrine in that comment, depending upon the situation, if it feels like it's a person that's teachable, I might post the comment and write something to them, or I'll just post it and wait and see if somebody else might be able to comment to that person. But, you know, if it's somebody that's just kind of being rude, and I can tell by their comment they're really involved in something serious, I won't post it. Because I don't want somebody who's a new believer or someone who's on the verge of coming to Christ to see that and get confused. My channel is God's channel first. I'm not here to please people. I know there's a lot of YouTubers on here who are here to fill your ears with stuff and to please you and all that. And I apologize if that hurts anybody's feelings, but I'm not on here to please you. I'm on here just to do what I feel the Lord leads me to do and hopefully to bless people. I do want to bless people, but if some if, I, if somebody doesn't like what I'm doing and I know that in my spirit and in my heart of hearts that I'm doing what the Lord has led me to do, well then that doesn't bother me and it shouldn't. People's chastisement and mocking and scorning we should never let it really bother us in our own spirit because the Bible says that in these days we will be persecuted and that we're supposed to rejoice in our persecution. And just like Jesus was persecuted by the Jewish hierarchies, your Pharisees and Sadducees, they were religious people. Unfortunately, most of us Christians who are true Christians are persecuted by the Pharisees and the Sadducees of Christianity. And it's very sad, but these are the days we're living in. So now let's move forward to what I wanted to discuss with you about judging others. Okay, the title of this article is Do Not Judge. Does Matthew 7 really teach that? Many are wrong in their interpretation of this passage. And what is written here says it better than I could ever say it. So I want to share it with you and I'll post the link below in the uh, about section of my video. It says Matthew 7, 1 through 5, For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now they did that in the NIV. My church and I have done a lot of street preaching and some preaching on college campuses. Based on that experience, I swear every person in America knows at least half of one scripture. They can all shout, judge not lest you be judged. They are not alone. Christians who should know better are also quick to shout this part of the scripture. They totally ignore the rest of Matthew 7 and what the rest of the Bible says about judging. And I think many of us who are putting ourselves out there, whether it's on the street, at the local store, um, in a group, going to prison ministries, whatever it is, any of us who are really putting ourselves out there in the public, you know, boldly, we get this a lot. And a lot of the people who are ridiculing us, who are claiming to be Christians, the funny thing is they're not doing anything except griping. Um, they're basically just sitting there, you know, getting online, checking stuff and finding something to nitpick and just griping at people. But if they look at themselves, I'm not saying all of them are that way. I'm sure there's some of them that do go out and do things, but most of them just sit there and do nothing but complain, murmur and complain. And the very thing they're accusing us of doing, they're doing. I'm the one getting falsely accused so I'm getting judged by people. I'm not falsely accusing anybody of anything. I'm just telling people the truth of what God's word says. We are commanded to judge in many places in the Bible. 
Oh, there's the shocker. Okay, wait. I hear the fireworks going off. The cannons firing. People are going to get mad on that one. Oh, boy. That's what it says. We are commanded to judge in many places in the Bible. It is a shocking thought, but it is true. We are commanded to judge false prophets. How? We are to judge their fruit, which are their lifestyles. The rest of Matthew 7 says that they will come to us in sheep's clothing. Matthew 7, 16 through 19, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or grapes from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. By their fruit, in other words, we are to judge these prophets by what they say and do. First Timothy also tells the Christian they are to judge. First Timothy 6.3 If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doing, doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. If you don't judge, how are you going to know from who to withdraw? As one preacher I have met on another forum has written, you cannot take one verse or one chapter out of the context of the entire Bible and build a doctrine around it. This foolishness of not judging is modernistic apostasy. And that's basically what I said when I was just talking about it. It is direct contradiction of God's clear instruction. There is judgment that is wrong. Judgment based on philosophy, social pressures, or personal preferences are wrong. But judgment based on clear scriptural principles are not only right, they are commanded. Let me give you an example. Um, for those of you who follow me and read all the stuff I write and listen to my videos and you hear what I have to say, what would you think if you were out in public one day and you happened to go eat lunch somewhere and it was a place that had a bar in it. It was like a restaurant with a little bar. And you walked in, you happened to look up and you recognized me and you saw me sitting up at the bar sloshing drinks down. One after the other with a cigarette in my hand. You heard me laughing and cussing. What would you think? You would make a judgment. You would be shocked and then you would make a judgment. You would also think, what is wrong with her? Would you not? Maybe you wouldn't come up to me and approach me in person because maybe you'd be embarrassed. But at some point, you would message me or email me and you would tell me what you saw. And you would, out of love, give me godly instruction. You would tell me what you thought, what you felt, how shocked you were. And then you would probably quote some scriptures to me and tell me, you know, I really need to think about these things. That is exactly what we are supposed to do. And it is wrong to go and tell people that they're not supposed to do that. To not do that is a great sin. You are failing in what God has commanded you to do if you do not do that. That is why people are running wild with sin lately because there's nobody, including many ministers, there's nobody telling people that what they're doing is wrong. It is an act of love to give godly correction. It would be no different than if you walked into the kitchen and you caught your child under the cabinet getting ready to ingest poison. You would scream as loud as you could and run and grab it out of their hand and tell them no. You would stop them. You would save their life in so doing. It's no different. If you see someone partaking in spiritual soul-killing poison and you have the love of God in your heart for that person, you're going to give them godly wisdom and godly correction. Nothing may happen right then and there, but I'll tell you what, 
whenever we go to people and we witness to them or tell them the truth, even if we don't get a reaction, or let me just put it differently, even if we don't get the reaction that we are hoping for, oftentimes we've planted a seed. It could be a few months down the road. It could be a, a few years. Something's going to happen in that person's life, and for whatever reason, that very thing you said is going to come up in their mind, and they're going to remember it. So this is why it's so important. When we go to heaven and we're kneeling before God, we're not going to just be judged for everything we've done. We're going to be judged by God for what we did not do. It says the following passage is another that commands the Christian to judge. 2 Corinthians 6.13 as a fair exchange, I speak as to my children, open wide your hearts also. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? We are commanded not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. This idea may be surprising to many, but we who are Christians are not only forbidden to marry unsaved people or date unsaved people, but we are also forbidden to be close friends with unsaved people. That means we must judge if this is someone we are going to be yoked with in marriage or even in a close friendship is a believer or not. Okay, so, and I think the reason for that is we're living here in this world. We are living in a body of flesh that is corrupt. Nine times out of ten, if you take a Christian and an unbeliever and you put them together, because the Christian, again, is in a body of flesh, you're going to be more prone to fall short and to sin and be pulled backwards into a life of sin by that relationship. And there's other spiritual reasons for that as well, but that's one of the reasons, okay? There are other places where we are commanded to judge. 1 Timothy 3.1 This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. This one right here always gets me. Incontinent because I worked in the healthcare industry. And incontinent means that you're unable to hold your bowel or your bladder. But I know that it doesn't mean that here, but it's just funny. I remember the first time I read that. I thought, what? People are going to be peeing and going to the restroom all over themselves? <laughs> That's what I thought it meant. Of course, I was only like, I don't know, 18. But anyhow, uh, just a funny thing. Okay, so incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. How are we to know who to turn away from if we're not to judge? We are not to have anything to do with people who claim to be Christians, yet are still lovers of their own selves, covetous, blasphemers, and all of the rest of those things. In other words, people who claim to be Christians, yet whose behavior proves that they do not have the power of Christianity or the Holy Spirit. What is the power? The power of Jesus Christ living inside by the Holy Ghost, which results in a holy life. Okay, now there are a lot of Christians who are not real Christians. And I remember my um, agent for my book when I first, my publishing agent, uh, he and I were talking about that. We were talking about different genres for my book. And he was talking about how the large majority of the group of people who claim to be Christians, only a small percentage of them are true Christians. The larger majority of them are basically your liberalized people who just believe in, they believe in God and they believe in Jesus, but that's all they really know. So they say, oh, I'm Christian just because they believe in God. 
but they aren't really saved or living a life the way they should be. Okay, now uh, three and six. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. The Christian must make a judgment to be able to identify the disorderly. The never judge idea won't fit the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 5, 9. I have written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy or idolater or a swindler, a drunkard or a slanderer. With such a man, do not eat. Now let's look that verse up in the King James one moment. Okay, this is New King James Version. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people, yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world in other words you can't totally go away from everybody and live in a tomb somewhere you know you have neighbors that are part of the world okay you're not socializing with them but you're being cordial you know somebody needs help with something you help them or whatnot but now i have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Um, for what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God, ju God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. So the Bible clearly shows us how serious it is. It's more serious when a person who's claiming to be a Christian is living a life of sin so much that a true Christian is not to have anything to do with such person. Now let's go back to the article. Sounds to me like we are commanded to judge if a person who calls himself a brother and is sexually immoral or greedy or idolater or a swindler or a drunkard or a slander. We are not to have anything to do with these folks. So we have to judge if a person is such a one. So what does Matthew 7 mean? Matthew chapter 7 is forbidding hypocritical judging. And that's what I spoke to you all about at the very beginning of this video. If you're doing something and then you're telling somebody else, don't do this, but yet you're doing it yourself, how can you say something to that person? So uh, here's a good example. A person who was attacking me over this whole judging business on Facebook in a group, it was a Christian group. She was just going on and on and on at me, just, you know, ripping me over it. And I even gave her the link to this article. Well, I happened to go to her Facebook profile in order that I could block her because she was driving me nuts. And I saw her picture much larger in this woman in her profile picture and all over her page where she had changed her picture, had everything up top hanging out. I mean, she was almost topless in the picture and she had stuff about God all over her page. And that would be okay as a Christian to privately say something to somebody about that. Okay. Because what kind of example are they setting there? Do you know how horrible that is to God? What that? What do you think God thinks about that? If we're going around proclaiming to be a Christian and we've got all of our business hanging out, whether you're male or female, if you're walking around with your business hanging out and claiming you're a Christian, you look pretty silly. You're a hypocrite for that as well. Now, if I was sitting here, even though nobody could see me, and I had all my business hanging out, then it would be wrong for me to say something to her about that, you know, because I would be a hypocrite as well. Or if I had stuff up everywhere with my business hanging out, see what I'm saying? I didn't say anything to her, wasn't worth it. This woman was not in her right mind or something, or not right spiritually, I don't know. There was no making sense with her, so I went ahead and blocked her. But I that just, that irritates me when I see 
um, people who proclaim to be Christian and they have stuff like that. Like there's a lot of men that friend me on Facebook and they write me messages. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister, for what you do. God bless you. And I'll go to their page and all of their friends are models with thong panties on and they're topless with their arms covering their nipples. And they've got sexual pictures of women all over the place. I have in times past, um, I won't say who, but there was a gentleman who is very popular and has a Christian web page. And you know how Facebook will give you friend suggestions. And when they give you a friend suggestion, it's because that friend is, another, is one of your friend's friends. And if you hover your mouse over, it'll tell you who is friends with this person that Facebook is suggesting to you. There was a pornographic looking picture of a woman. Obviously, it was a spam, spammy type pornography page. Very, very sexual. Extremely so. I mean, this person had looked like they had thin strips of masking tape covering their business. And... I had already noticed another suggestion from a similar type of a page for the same person. I won't say who, and it was a man. And I took screenshots of the page and of his page showing that as his friend, so he couldn't lie out of it. And I was close enough to this person to say something. You know, he wasn't a stranger. And I wrote him and told him, you know, that I was really shocked by this and quoted some scriptures and told him, you know, if he needed to pray about this or something, I'd be more happy to pray with him about this, but that, you know, he needed prayer for this problem. Of course, he um, denied the, the whole thing. And after getting to know him even better, I, I can guarantee that he had friended those people on purpose. But my point is, there's a way to go to people and to say something. Now, he may not have taken it well for me because he was a very prideful person. And I think it's embarrassing. You know, really, a man should go to a man about that and a woman should go to a woman. But in that sort of a situation, what do you do? See what I mean? So, anyhow, those are some good examples. Back to the point. Um, so what does Matthew 7 mean? Matthew chapter 7 is forbidding hypocritical judging. For example, we're not to judge someone who likes porn as sexually immoral if we are having sexual fantasies about someone to whom we are not married. That would make us as immoral as he is and just as much under God's wrath. We would do well to be very careful in judging of any kind. So there again. If you're doing the same thing, and I kind of noticed, don't know if it means anything. I know when preachers preach, they'll talk about symbolism of stuff. But um, if you notice, that verse talks about a splinter and a plank. Both of those things are wood. A plank is part of wood, and so is a splinter. They are the same thing. Okay? The splinter is smaller, and the plank is bigger. So in comparison there what this person's saying, you know, he's talking about sexual immorality being the same thing. So if you have the same thing you're doing, you can't go to somebody else about that same thing. Now you could technically go to them and you could say, Hey, you know what? I think you and I can help one another. And they'll be like, what's that? Well, I have this problem with with lying or with sexual immorality or, or whatever it is, or with cursing and swearing. I really have this problem with saying bad words. And I noticed that you slip up once in a while too. And I've really been um, thinking about trying to stop doing this. It's really convicting. I'm really convicted in my heart. I don't want to do it, but it's such a habit. And since you do it too, why don't you and I together try to be better about this? There is a way of godly correction right there without being a hypocrite. Now you got to be genuine. You can't go, you can't just make that up. You have to genuinely want to do that thing you're talking about. But that's an excellent way to correct somebody and seek their help at the same time and not be a hypocrite. But like I said, you have to mean it. You can't just make up that you want to do this thing just so you can say something to them. 
That would make us as immoral as he is and just as much under God's wrath. We would do well to be very careful in judging of any kind. The best kind of judgment and the most correct judgment is when one judges oneself, not according to what he feels in his heart, but by the word of God. So we can see here that the world just has this very, very perverted um, definition of judging. And don't think that's an accident either. That is intentionally um, done by Satan because, let's face it, if we don't feel convicted about something, we're not going to repent for it. You've got to have conviction for repentance. Conviction is a necessary ingredient for repentance to come. So do you see the trick of Satan in that? He does not want people to feel convicted because if they feel convicted, they're going to go to God. They're going to confess this thing they're doing to God. They're going to feel guilty for this thing they're doing as they confess to God. And they're going to turn away from it and or ask God for help. That is the last thing the enemy wants. So because of this perverted, you're judging me definition, I'll tell you what's happened. Um, it's, what's happened is political correctness. That's the same mentality. Political correctness. Um, people have lost their moral values. People no longer have the sensitivity to things that they had in times past. And there's so much more. Nothing good has come out of this seed that has been planted of false judgment. So think about what we've talked about here in this video. Pray about it. Look up those passages for yourself. You know, there are different types of judging. There's a wrong type of judging and there's a right type of judging. Um, a wrong type of judging we gave an example of to do with if you're committing the same sin and you're telling someone else not to do it. That's a hypocritical judging. But there's also the type of judging where let's say you see somebody and they're driving a car that's not so nice and you think, huh, I don't want anything to do with that person. They're poor or they're probably, because they drive a car like that, they're probably dirty and um, that person's probably a thief and a liar. Okay, that's a very wrongful type of judging that we are never to do. Never, never, never. Okay. So another good example, you see a sister that you know quite well at church one Sunday. She's always dressed respectfully, but all of a sudden she's starting to wear mini skirts up to her rear end and she's got her blouse unbuttoned so far that it looks like something's going to come flying out to think to yourself, I bet that she's cheating on her husband and she's a prostitute. That would be a wrongful type of judgment. To think to yourself, huh, I wonder if she's having some sort of a spiritual problem. I've noticed that she's been flaunting herself quite differently than she did before. Maybe I need to pray over this and speak with her privately about this then you would speak to her privately and maybe you would bring up yourself in the past, bring up a situation where you did something similar just to bring, make her more comfortable. Like, Hey, you know, 15 years ago, I remember this one time where I went to the store and I was wearing this little cutesy outfit and Oh my goodness, you know, whatever, anything, be inventive. You'll find a way. I'm just trying to give you a comparison here. So the wrong judgment is to say, well, she must be cheating on her husband and she's prostituting herself. We're never to do that. A right type of judgment would be, she appears that she's having a problem because I've noticed that she has been uh, portraying herself very lustfully. And this is very sinful. We're not supposed to do this. And I need to talk with her. So you get your wrong type of judgment and your right type of judgment. Let me give you one more example of the wrong one, and a different type of wrong one, the one we discussed about the plank. 
Okay, you're standing there on turf wearing a somewhat clingy skirt. It's not a mini skirt, but it shows off your curves. And you've got a blouse on that shows, you know, maybe not as much cleavage as what her blouse is showing, but you got a little something something going on there, enough to make the eye of a man wander ever so slightly. Um, so you go to, you can't say something to the sister in church, even though she's got more hanging out than you. You can't say anything. You're just as bad. You may not be showing as much, but you're no different. That's a hypocritical judging. So I hope that I've ironed this out with some people. I'm sure there will still be people that will tell me something in a comment that I did not even say or imply, and that's fine. I'm used to it. I love you all very much. God bless you. Go forward in your day or in your evening and bless as many people as you can. Time is short. Thanks for listening.